section 2.2 and we're going to talk more on functions and their graphs. So example one, we're going to look at intervals in which function in which a function increases, decreases, or is constant. So let's look at this graph right here. And if you look at this graph, just see how right here in blue the function is increasing from left to right. So the graph is increasing between 0, I'm looking at what it, what it does to the x value of the domain, from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2, it looks like the function is increasing. And, then we're, and whenever we do intervals of increase or decreasing, we always use parentheses. So between 0 and 2. We're not going to include 0 because on the other side of 0, it's not increasing. So we want to look at between 0 to 2. We don't include 0 because at 0, we got decrease on this side and increase on this side. Okay? So 0 to 2. And then let's talk about when it's decreasing. Again, from left to right. So notice how the graph is going down, you know, decreasing, and it's decreasing here. So it is decreasing, and then and we look at the domain and when it happens from here. Well, notice how this arrow indicated forever, so it's actually decreasing um, all the way from here to zero. From negative infinity to zero. And again, we always use parentheses when we're talking about intervals of increasing and decreasing. Because at zero, um, notice how zero is at both these endpoints here. Zero is not doing either or. It's going down here and then up here. And between two to infinity, because again, this graph is going and decreasing between two, and this goes forever, so between two and the domain that where that happens is from two to infinity. Okay, hope you understand why that, that's true. Again, because between two, which is right here, and infinity, well infinity is this way, right? We know how this graph goes down forever and ever and ever and ever, and that, again, I can't really draw that, but see how there's always going to be an x value that touches this right here. Okay? Okay, so now let's look at um, part B. Notice how the graph here is increasing from here to here. So the domain where that happens is between 0 to infinity. It's increasing. And it's constant. Constant means that it doesn't go up or it doesn't go down. It's constant here and here. So it's constant from negative infinity all the way to zero. And that's when it's constant. So on your own, go ahead and do the next one. I'll go ahead and pause the video and then you can check it with mine. Tell me when the function is increasing, decreasing, and it's constant. So again, it looks like the function is increasing from negative infinity, so negative infinity all the way up to negative 1, and from 1 to infinity. Okay. Again, use uh, parentheses around those endpoints. And then it's decreasing from negative 1 all the way to 1. Let's talk about something called relative maximum and relative minimum. And um, relative just means around a certain area. So if you look at this graph right here, and look at it very carefully, if I were to go ahead and extend these arrows here, this would be like this. It would go on forever that way, or that way. And because of that, we really don't have a true maximum, but relative maximum means, well, within this localized area, there's a maximum, the highest point on the graph. A minimum would be the lowest point on the graph, not including, like, the ones that go on forever. So that's what it means to be relative. So I look at this carefully, and I look at part A. Um, the num try to use the graph to find each of the following. The numbers, if any, at which F has a relative maximum. So F has a relative maximum at 0. So at 0, which is right here, that's the highest point. At 0, they're the highest point on the graph. Okay. 
the the maxima, the relative maxima is two. Okay, what is the actual maximum? So we think of it as if you have f of zero equals two. The maximum is the highest point on the graph, and we know it occurs at zero, so x equals zero. And the actual maxima is two. Okay. So part B, we have minimum, or the F has a relative minimum. At and that looks like it occurs at three and negative three. So at negative three and three. The relative minimum. So the relative minima is negative 1. That's what the y value is. So we have negative 1 here and negative 1 there. So now I want to talk about something called odd and, odd and even functions and symmetry. We're going to talk a lot more about this um, when we get to the third exam and the third chapter. We're going to kind of touch base on it here. And then when we get to the third chapter, we're going to talk about it more we start graphing polynomial functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and define what an even function is, and I'm going to need some more space here. So let me erase all this stuff I had here earlier. I wrote really big, so hopefully you didn't write that big. And a function f is an even function if f of negative x equals f of x for all x in the domain of f. In other words, the right side of the equation, or the um, the right side of the equation, doesn't change if x is replaced with negative x. A function f is odd an odd function if when you put negative x in you actually change the value of that function for all x in the domain of f. In other words if x is replaced with negative x then every term in the on the right changes its sign. So let's look at some examples. Usually, generally, students will get better when we start doing examples. So let's go ahead and look at um, example two. Determine whether each of the following functions is even, odd, or neither. So what we're going to do is when you want to determine whether a function is even or odd or neither, you want to replace x with negative x. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and look at this function, and wherever I see x, I'm put negative x in there. Okay, and that equals, while well, negative x to the third power is the same thing as negative x times negative x times negative x, this here gives me x squared times negative x which gives me negative x to the third power. So I get negative x to the third power plus 6x. Okay, now I'm going to compare this to the original function right here. Notice how the first term changes its sign, second term changes its sign, and I change every sign. So if I replace negative x in with x, every term ends up changing its sign. That is an odd function. Okay. The definition of what I said on the page is if x is replaced with negative x, then every term on the right changes its sign. In this case, this changes its sign and this changes its sign from the original function. Okay. Part B, I'm going to replace x with negative x. So I have g of negative x equals negative x to the fourth power minus 2 times negative x squared. 
It's very important to put those parentheses in there when you're um, replacing these X's <clears throat> because the negative, um, the negative sign is really important whether it's inside the parentheses or not it determines your answer. Okay, so I have a negative X to the fourth. That same thing as negative X times negative X times negative X times negative X. This is X squared and this is X squared. So I get X to the fourth. So I get X to the fourth right here. This right here is negative x times negative x, which is x squared. I get minus 2 times x squared. Notice how when I replace negative x into the function, on the right hand side, nothing changed. I got exactly the same thing back. That's going to be an even function. Okay, and then part c, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in there. I'm going to replace x with um, negative x. I have h of negative x equals negative x squared plus 2 times negative x plus 1. That's going to give me, this right here is going to give me x squared. This gives me minus 2x plus 1. By compared to the original problem, like this, day, this term stay the same, this term changes sign, and this term stay the same. It kind of did same, different, same. So when you don't have consistency there, this is going to be neither. It either all changes signs, or none of it changes signs. So it's going to be neither. Okay. So on your own, go ahead and do um, the, two, the three problems, and go ahead and pause the video, and then check your answer. Okay, so in part A, I put negative x in for x. I got negative x in parentheses squared plus 6. This became x squared, drop down to plus 6. This did not change at all from the original problem. So it's an even function. I put negative x for x in here. I put it in here and here. So I got negative x here and here. This right here ended up being negative x to the third power. Remember, negative x times negative x times negative x. That's just x squared times negative x, which is negative x cubed. So this right here, I wrote right there. And then I wrote plus x because I got that right there. Then I multiply these two things together and I get negative x to the third plus x. Change sign from here to here. Change sign from here to here. An odd function. And then part c, I put negative x in for x. I got negative x to the fifth power plus 1. This right here becomes negative x to the fifth plus 1. This change signs. This did not, so it's neither. So let's look at the function f of x equals x squared minus 4. Determine whether this function is even, odd, or neither by the method from example 2. So we're going to look at this problem like we did in example 2. If you want to determine what's odd or even, we're going to look at um, what happens when we plug in negative x. It gives me negative x squared minus 4. It's still x squared minus 4. This did not change at all, so it's an even function. Okay, so let's see what this really means. So what I have here on the right-hand side is actually the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 4. If you were to make a table like we did in the first exam and connect the dots, so this is what you would have when you connect the dots. This is what the graph would look like. So I think on the first exam, you had a problem like this, where you had to put in an x value, um, find a y, and you connected the dots and made a graph. That's what it would look like. But I didn't show that. If you notice carefully, look at the point. I actually labeled the point here. Here are some points on the graph. Do you notice that when um, x is negative 3, or x is 3, okay, we got y to be 5. When x is negative 3, we got y to be 5 again. That's going to go back to this idea here. When I put an x, I got the function. When I put a negative x in there, the function was still the same, or the y value was still the same. So again, if I put 3 in here, I would get, what, 5, because 3 squared is 9, minus 4 is 5. I put negative 3 in here, I would still get 9 minus 4, which is 5. So I got the same output, the same y value. This is what's telling me. Um, same thing with the negative 2 and 2. If I put in 2 in for x or negative 2 in for x, I still got the same y value. I put in 1 or negative 1 in for x, I still got the same y value, negative 3, and so on. So when you have an even function, your x value whether it's positive or negative, will still give you the same y value. It's going to be symmetric 